Let's discuss this development further. We're joined by Paul Meli, a consulting fellow, Africa program at Chatham House. Uh, he is based in London. Thank you very much, Mr. Meli, for joining us. Now, we know that the ultimatum issued by ECOWAS has expired and the Niger junta remains defiant. What should we expect from the regional body? I think probably at first, just uh, a careful pause, to be honest. Everybody is extremely focused on the fact that the deadline expired formally in last night. But in practical terms, ECOWAS actually has to organize um, and prepare for the possible military intervention that it might do. But even before those practicalities are really completed, it's continuing to push on the diplomatic front. Uh, so it's quite possible there'll be a further attempt to send a delegation to Niger. The one that was sent last week was basically snubbed. They weren't allowed to go any further than the airport. Uh, they didn't meet the uh, coup leaders. Um, and that, that actually was quite a striking contrast with the situation in the countries, other countries in the region that had had coups, um, where the leaderships of the new juntas uh, were willing to engage at a high level with the ECOWAS delegates. Um, in, the, in the case of Niger, the coup leaders um, have, from the outset, take, taken a much more defiant sort of stance. So ECOWAS will push on the diplomatic side again and also uh, try and uh, see what pressure it can bring with sanctions. Um, it, it's imposed very tough trade and financial sanctions on Niger. Right. So, so far we've seen a very defiant junta in Niger. We've seen a majority of the ECOWAS countries supporting uh, military action. We also have several countries, I think about four of them, who are opposed to any military intervention. How is the ECOWAS going to handle this and what will be the impact to the unity of the bloc? Well, there will long term certainly be some difficult questions about the unity of the bloc. But it, it's worth noting that three of the countries that have opposed military intervention. Um, so Mali, Burkina Faso and uh, Guinea, they are countries which are not um, currently under civilian democratic rule. They are fellow putschists, if you like, military regimes. So uh, they are seeking to um, line up in support of Niger because it's also helping to defend their position. Um, but there is a really difficult challenge for ECOWAS long term, which is that with these other countries, it had agreed a framework for bringing them back under civilian rule. Now, in the atmosphere that's following the current crisis, it may be that that roadmap for getting back to democracy comes under quite a lot of pressure. And uh, it's not clear whether the leaders of the other putschist regimes will still stick to the roadmaps they've agreed. So. These are pretty huge challenges for ECOWAS, but the region feels that the region's constitutional leaders, those who have been democratically elected, those who are leaders of constitutional elected governments, feel that they don't really have any choice but to take a very firm line now and for the risk otherwise of having further coups and a further dismantling or disintegration of the West African democratic model flawed though it may be but it is largely uh, genuinely democratic and it's certainly constitutional rule and by um, having a series of coups that that of course is threatened